Good afternoon, everyone. This is the monthly meeting of the Dighton Stormwater Committee. It's Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. And I'm calling the meeting to order at 1.07 p.m. Uh, we are located in the Old Town Hall Upper Level Meeting Room, 1111 Somerset Avenue, Dighton. This is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for internet posting at www.dighton-ma.gov and YouTube. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Attendance, we have Mrs. Caldonia, Mr. Ferry, Mr. Agia, Mr. Pilling, Mr. Woods. Yeah. May I have an agenda? It's so okay, it's a gulat. Only member absent is Charles Mello. Uh, agenda item 4A, review discuss FY24 Finance Committee budget meeting April 27th. Um, um, can, I, can I make a motion to take Brook Street Solar out of the way since we only have one person in the audience that oh, cares about it? Okay. So that's a motion. We all care about it. Oh, yes, we all care about it. Well, I said in the audience they care about it. <laughs> uh, I have a motion to take agenda item 5A out of order. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, vote unanimous. Mrs. Beausoleil, did you wish to come to the podium? Okay, so Brook Street Solar, what's the latest? We were waiting on plans as uh, built. No, we put it out to have the as built reviewed by a third party consultant. I think we talked about that at the last meeting and we voted that we would Move it forward when it came in. Well, we got the two bids uh, from Green and Beta, and it appears Green is the lower bid, and that's the one that we're going to go with. We sent it off to Grasshopper three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. The check came in yesterday. Okay. So now that the check is here, now we have to set up the 53G account and then authorize Green to do their review. So, um, Basically, nothing happened since the last meeting. Um, and now we will advance that forward and see where it goes. So at the next meeting, we should have a review completed and have a better idea of where we're going to go. Has anybody been up to the site? Um, okay, I know that um, I was contacted by uh, Mr. Hafez. He was looking for somebody to clear the land, and Mr. Ferry recommended a company in Freetown uh, on the Asona site. And um, the last I heard from Mr. Hafez was that they were set to go. So has that land been cleared for the fire break? Does anybody know? No, they're waiting uh, until they have a conservation for that. Okay. But the com who's waiting for approval? Uh, Grasshopper or the company? Grasshopper. Okay. So that'll be tomorrow? Well, we'll see. Yeah, they have it. It's before us. So okay. Are you waiting for plans from them also? No, we have plans. Um, I did a site visit with Mr. Fassendola and um, Adam from um, Level. I guess Nick Fassendola won't be present at my meeting, but Adam will be. Um, we looked at that area, and then we looked at the area where they wanted to top some trees. And um, the, that area where they were going to top some trees, I had requested the trees be marked out, but they weren't marked out in the field. So we do have outstanding items with them. Okay. So uh, I don't think that's a firefighter. Um, 
if will CONCOM, if they can, give approval to clear that fire break, even if you don't have the information for the other one? Can there be separate issues is my question. I believe so, yeah. Um, okay. The Conservation Commission may have concerns about the site not being stable and allowing more land to be cleared without the remainder of the site even being stable. But do we, know, do we know how many thousand square feet they're clearing? Because that's been back and forth. Is it less than 35,000? Does anybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was like 20,000 or something like that. It was, it was less. What about the ditch, Mr. Ferry? How, are the, how is the clearing company going to get across the ditch? They can traverse that, but a simple pipe would solve that problem. But isn't, when the land is cleared, isn't there an understanding there is going to be something that, that a pipe or something so that a fire truck, if it had to, could drive over? That's all on them, not us. I know it, but um, I believe the plans that plan that they presented. Do they do they show some kind of a pipe or a culvert or something? Yeah, yeah it's it's not a full blown culvert like no bridge coming off the foot. It's, it's much inch. smaller. Fifteen inch class V RCP culvert means drainage swale with precast flared. It's supposed to be safe flared. It says feared and second feared and second. And it has the dimensions and the levels. Amber's no. What you want that number? So and the 14 foot wide dry, gravel driveway extension will provide access to parcel 16-27. New gravel area is 1356 square feet. Um, approximately 6,164 square feet of new site disturbance beyond the original approved, uh, approved window disturbance. Other than the CONCOM, does anybody else have to approve what's being done? Who's who's looking at that ditch thing? And yes, yeah, Ms. Dagia. Yeah. yeah, so there was a, a email that was cloud of effort between just about everyone in this room and including the fire department, letting them know exactly what needed to be done. And so uh, it's, it's been very explicit. They're going down the list, checking off the boxes, but as far as I know, they're only about halfway down the list. So there's still quite a few things that need to be done. Oh, okay. All right. But all of the, all the parties are involved, fire department, uh, health department, stormwater, conservation, Tommy, everybody. Okay. Is it likely they'd be ready for the next, by the time we meet in May? Or are they not moving that quickly? I'd like to think they would be, but it's going to depend on what happens at the conservation meeting tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. It's, it's quite possible, though. As far as the, the drainage view for the existing basins, let's say I'm hoping we'll have that done by our next stormwater meeting. And just for clarification, the email that I'm referencing is just about the clearing for the battery storage. This has nothing to do with energizing the system. That's completely independent. That goes back to the third party review that Agent Pilling was referring to. So this is just for the battery storage and the clearing associated with that. So to the planning board special permit. Right, that has to go through planning board, right? That, that went through planning already, uh, battery storage. Yes. Okay. So there's two. I didn't know if it had to go back. They're, they're, they will, yes, eventually, but um, they, they still are working two parallels. The battery storage is looking mm -hmm. independently from the um, actual array because they don't have a permit for the battery storage. So that's what they're right. working on. Right. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments? Mrs. East today? Would you like to, do you have anything to comment on? I don't think so. Not at this time. We're still waiting for, um, so the battery storage, the special permit was approved by the planning board already. Was that on what the conditions though. With conditions, yes. So there are conditions attached. Um, they still need to provide um, they, they they need to 
uh, forgive me, they need to provide um, the proper paperwork and stuff to determine what the decommissioning bond is for the additional battery storages. Uh, so we don't have that yet. They have been advised um, because they originally were under the impression that the original decommissioning bond encompassed the batteries. But I let them know that, no, that was not the case, that the original decommissioning bond covered the original special permit. Then since that time, they modified that special permit to encompass the battery storage units, and they still need to make that whole for the decommissioning bond on that part. So that's the only outstanding item that's left on our plate at the moment with the planning. Okay. Mary, can you hear the discussion okay? Yep. Yep, everything's okay. clear. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Yep. Bosley? Um, well, through the planning board, didn't they have to um, somehow disguise, not disguise it, but somehow um, not camouflage it, but kind of hide it from, hide it from sight whatever. kind of thing? That hasn't, has that been determined how they're going to do that? Well, that's part of the condition of the special. Oh, program. okay. Well, I thought you I thought you meant that the only condition was. Um, no, 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 no. There's many conditions okay. on, on both special permits. The first one that was issued and the second one that was issued that encompassed the battery storage units. Okay. Um, no, there's, there's several conditions, um, which is pretty standard on every project, but there's standard conditions that have to be met before they can be up and operating. Um, landscaping is one of the things I know, and that's been an issue. And I think that's been ongoing. I think the site, my understanding, and, you know, forgive me if I'm speaking out of context, but it seems to me that it needs to be, um, the site needs to be more, uh, what's the word? Um, Green. Stabilized. <laughs> and it's, it's, stabilized seems to be used a lot. Stabilized and you know, properly grass. landscaped. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I, I believe that's still being worked on. Um, but it's it's still part of the conditions. So they're still required to do it. That's never been lost. It's still there. Okay. And that green company that you you said you were high. So do how does that work? Does that come through you? Like now they're gonna go do their investigation of how to make that basin work, and then they come back to you? Yes, yeah, so we are the ones hiring. Yeah. They're working for us as the Storm Water Committee. So they don't start working until money goes in the account, and that's what we just got. So they will review the ASBO plans, the calculations. They're going to go walk the site, and they're going to make recommendations on how to, you know, what's lacking, and then there'll be a discussion on how we're going to bring the state the site into compliance if anything is lacking, which you know, until we get the review, we can't say for certainty. But so you haven't gotten the review to know no, what they're saying is lacking. No, as of yesterday, the tech came in, so now to like tomorrow well, and tell them go ahead. Go ahead and 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 then they'll start the review. Okay. And the planting is still um, I know it's a great time of year for doing plantings. I'd like to hope they're in there, but some of the plantings are going on top of those berms around right. the basins. Yeah, yeah. Until we know that those berms are where they need to be at the right height, I don't think they should be planting in any of Yeah. That doesn't stop the trees between you yeah. and the, the rest of it. Exactly. And the reforestation or yeah. forest enhancement yeah. is the real name that was put on the uh, plants. That's the name that they used. Okay. Thank you. By the next meeting, we'll have a lot more information. Okay. On batteries and the drainage and all of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what was the bid that was awarded? How much money? You know? It was like, don't quote me, like 1500 or so. I, I don't, I can open up an email and find it. 1500 I think it was oh, like that. But 3000 it was, it was a very small amount of money. It wasn't like it was a $30,000. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any other item that we should take out of order? Uh, then we'll go back to A. Uh, 
review, discuss FY24 Finance Committee budget meeting, April 27, 2023. Mr. Ferry, you planning to go to that? Okay. Um, I'm going to be out of town, so I won't be there um, for the stormwater, obviously the stormwater budget. But the other thing that was talked about, and I don't know if they're going to get into special articles or one of the things that we discussed with Mr. Mullen was uh, the engineering assistance for the uh, MS4. And he mentioned that it could be money from that's on hand from Opera, but if they, if it comes up, uh, I, I don't know how it was left. If in fact we are going to have some of those funds, or if it's going to be a special article, but I don't want it to slip yeah, through. I believe it's both. So, yeah, uh, special article is a placeholder. So it's determined by Hopper. Oh, okay. You um, did submit it as an article, correct? Excuse me. You did submit it as an article, right? Because it's. I know in the capital outlay they discuss it the rating because it's a requirement. So that helps with the rating. I didn't submit a special article because he said it would be, he was sure it's going to be Apple funds, but um I know that we got some information from Weston and Sampson. That was that was before the statewide um stormwater meeting, uh, which I was at another meeting, so I couldn't be there, but uh, they did send me the minutes. And as a result of that, I sent an email to Newton Tedder at EPA because when I read it, it was like, oh, brother. So the bad news is that there is that whole newsletter and what was discussed, talked about. The EPA, Newton Ted, I guess, was the guest speaker and took up most of the meeting. And he was there to answer, what is it you're asking us to do? Again, statewide. And we had discussed before about the status of our bylaw and regulations, thinking we were in full compliance. So what he wrote back to me was, if your regulations state or rely on the state regulations, you're on the list to do them over because the EPA had asked the state to do it and they neglected to do it. If the state had revised their regulations and everyone that said, we're gonna rely on the state regs, we wouldn't have to do it. But as I remember, um, most of the reporting agencies in the state, which is most cities and towns, uh, are out of compliance. So I went back, checked us again. Um, I think ours may have more items than the state regs, but specifically it does say that, that we would follow mass DEP. Um, and I don't think there's enough detail in our regs at present. So um, I sent an email back to Mike and um, Mr. Mullen and um, the engineer at Weston and Sampson. And so uh, she said she was aware of this latest development. Uh, my guess is they're gonna have a lot of requests. Um, so this additional work, we were thinking we were gonna move on the next step of testing, dry weather testing of outfalls, wet weather testing and all that whole thing. Um, that's still down the road because we've still gotta be planning on doing it, but, uh, and that's more of the, the, if you will, the fiscal part of it. This other thing, uh, regs, and uh, I'm just looking to point me in the right direction because if they're out there, I'll find them. So um, Newton Tedder said, if in fact it would be uh, good for him to come down or to make a Zoom presentation, he'd do it. So I let Mike and the selectmen know about that. Um, Number one, because the Board of Selectmen had asked the Stormwater Committee to come to one of the meetings after budget is behind us and explain what the Stormwater Committee does. And I thought that would be an appropriate time to invite Newton Tedder to zoom in or show up, whatever his availability is. So the Selectmen agreed to that. But right now, the main concern is, uh, other than the budget, um, 
and what's been provided for in the budget. Uh, this additional money for, I'll call it additional work. Um, so, oh, as far as the budget goes, Mr. Mullen said that Mrs. Uh, Kerwin would do the minutes for this meeting. Uh, she'll be paid overtime to do it based on the recording for, until the end of June. If the budget passes, and if Mr. Claude F. F. C. If Mr. Ferry gets a full-time hours for his administrative assistant, there would be some assistance for stormwater, for conservation, and for Mr. Ferry. Um, the amount of time we would need as a committee is not a lot. It's basically getting ready for the meeting, doing the minutes, that kind of stuff. But uh, it, it would ju just be a matter of scheduling time around, I guess, meetings, uh, as far as ClimCom and Storm want to go. So we got to wait to see if it gets approved at I town meeting. I need a lot. Well, as I say, um, the whole situation is, right now what we're lacking is somebody to do the minutes on a regular basis. Mr. Pilling's been doing them. Um, Mrs. Um, Ferreira said she would do the March meeting when she was here. Uh, she would get those done because she was here, uh, but she can't do any more. And she told me she was working on them. So um, we'll see what happens. But I mainly want to make sure somebody's at the meeting to talk about uh, where we are with this. So any other discussion, budget, or anything else, comments, questions, anything? All right. So A and B are pretty much the same, which I just covered. Uh, when I get more information uh, from EPA, uh, and we knew I'll let you know. Um, I haven't heard back from uh, Weston and Samson, but what I'm hoping is when we hear from them again regarding the EPA requirements, it's going to be, I would think it almost could be a, almost, almost not exactly, uh, one size fits all as far as regulations go. And then anything that doesn't fit, we'll fine tune it. Um, we don't have to revise everything in the regs, but the part that is uh, post-construction is the one that is, I guess it's been hanging for a few years. And because the state didn't do it now, it's congratulations, everybody. You've been given the honor of doing all those yourself. So, but I think one set should be able to work. Um, agenda item 5B, Clearway, Arujo Farms. Where are we with that? Did you skip 4B? No, that's what I said. 4A oh, and 4B were kind of together. Yeah. So, Clearway, um, as we know, they jumped over all the hurdles, and whatever at our last meeting, we gave them the go ahead to start work again from a stormwater perspective. They haven't done anything yet. We're waiting. They're moving ahead, aren't they? Let's They're supposed see. to be, but again, they haven't started yet. So my guess is once we told them to go ahead, they had to mobilize screws, and but we haven't heard that they're starting. Oh, I, I did see a big truck, like I would think it's the kind you'd have, it was a tractor trailer, and the trailer was like those big trucks that haul dirt. Uh, and then another day, there was a big, really big semi park there that uh, might have had pots in it, but I'm not sure. We're talking about Clearway? Yeah. Yeah. One behind Rujo. Well, I don't think they have much earthwork to do at this point. I think they're going to start drilling the holes for the panels. I don't think there's a lot of earthwork to be done. You talked to Mr. Christopuli lately? Yes. He's the neighbor. Um, the porta potties, one of them had been laid over in the wind. Yeah. Um, it got put back up yesterday. So. Is she still getting water? He's still getting water. I explained to him about the, the swale that's going to be going down, down the property line. I also told him I assume that one of the first things they're going to do when they get in there is the earth move. I mean, it's not heavy earthwork, but they're going to cut in the swale. Because once the swale is cut in, you don't want to do it after the panels are off. Right. Okay. Um, but we're waiting for a start date. And 
as soon as we know we would advise. Does Mr. Arugio said they were going to move those piles. Would that require trucks? That's that's a different. It's not the panels. That's a different area of the site. Uh, yes, that would involve trucks. From maybe that's maybe that, the truck looked empty to me when I saw it. So maybe that's what I saw. Um, speaking of Clearway, um, everyone's been getting those weekly reports that we asked for. Um, some of those pictures were the new pictures, not the same ones. Some of the new pictures were really good. So I asked and got permission if we decide to use some of those new photos in the calendar. Okay, there was one of Vernal Pool with some kind of eggs in it. There was another, there was another one that was totally camouflaged. It was supposed to be some kind of a frog, and I kept looking at it. I couldn't see the frog. It was, but anyhow, uh, another one was um, a long shot showing they put in the second uh, silt sock, you know, the one that had been driven over. They put in a separate one. Um, and I thought that might be a good example of, of control of runoff. But um, that was, so anyhow, I'm saving all those. I haven't gone to BP yet because um, I'm still collecting. And I don't expect that they would be, as long as I think I get there before the school closes, it could be a fall project, uh, which is like what we did with the town book. Um, anything else on Clearway, Arujo Farms? No? Do they have anything before you at CONCOM? Okay. Uh, agenda item 5C, Tremont and Middle Street solar projects. We did our pre-construction site walk, however it was a few weeks ago, We've gone in and started cutting trees. I haven't noticed that they've been hauling anything out. No, it seems like they're not aggressively that. Not, yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. Have put my problem in so. So, I, Chief, and I have sent a couple of emails to them stating that we want that tree uh, brush removed immediately. So I've just received a response today that they're getting ready to mobilize any day now to get that done. One of the things that we said is we didn't want any felled timber left on the property, uh, especially brush, tree limbs, et cetera, et cetera. Which especially with the dry weather. So um, so we've been we've been corresponding with them for the last week, week and a half, and I, I got a confirmation to pay them back up this week. But they were under an obligation to what get the trees felled before the bats moved in. Normally, is that what it was? Yeah, so they accomplished that. So now they got to go back and do the cleanup. In the meantime, it's drying out. Okay, anything else on? Um... That's Blue Wave, right? Fremont Middle. Yes. Um, and now. I will mention that um, during that walk, uh, we kind of get separated and I was with Mr. and Mrs. Cabral. And as a result of that, I did write a letter um, to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and uh, the letter was about the comments uh, that were made by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Cabral, uh, citing the uh, staff in the Board of Assessors office. But since we were on a stormwater pre-construction meeting, I just thought I'd mention, they were very complimentary about the service they received. And uh, not only mentioned the current employees, but also the late Mrs. Beauregard. So uh, that was really nice. Agent reports, 6A. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I'm jumping around, I'm looking at the wrong seat. Um, by the way, Customs Conservation Commission update. So I did get visited um, by the owner a couple weeks ago and um, he was questioning the letter the Conservation Commission wrote. However, um, I did speak with Outback Engineering actually today because we are speaking on other matters that are on my agenda. Um, and I asked if there was an update because as of last week, the update from 
drag it out back was that he knew that they submitted a proposal to the owner, but hadn't heard back. But today he said he, uh, they're in receipt there. They must be uh, retained. So they retained Outback Engineering. Carrie, can you hear okay with the ear coming on? Um, yeah, I can hear. So I expect those wetlands will be flagged. Now, I'm calling notice of intent for the changes out of that. Anybody else have anything on 508 Customs? So we'll put this on the agenda for the next meeting to get an update from CONCOM. Um, 6B, 210 William Street. This is a new address for the Stormwater Committee. It is, and I don't want to say it should have been on here as an address or not, but um, we were on at the Board of Health agenda the other day, uh, last week, week before. Um, because I was not signing off on the building permit because there were outstanding stormwater issues. Well, that I felt were outstanding stormwater issues. Uh, my board has voted that I cannot withhold signing off on a building permit for stormwater issues. I can only hold back for board of health issues. So I wanted this committee to be aware of that um, moving forward, if there's anything stormwater related, it's going to have to happen externally to the building permit process. Who's inspecting it? The area, the site, will it still be the stormwater agent? Okay. Um, and obviously that that's the union be, hall. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what they wanted to be. Ah. That's what they wanted that's to be. Right, right, right. Have you seen the plans? Um. Yeah, we approved it. Beautiful. Yeah, we approved it. Yeah, the planning board. Yeah. Does it fall under stormwater? How many square feet of disturbance? Well, that was ultimately the discussion at the Board of Health was whether or not it was over under 35,000, which is kind of a similar discussion we had about 508 customers a while ago. It's a definition of disturbance per our regulations and bylaw. And I know that was something that's come up years past, and it's in our topics for something to add into definitions when we revise our regulations, but we keep delaying revising our regulations, so. Um, in a way, that's probably good because of what just got loaded on us. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, so yeah, it kind of all works together, just like the Audubon stuff, we can put it all together. Like and that. as a matter of fact, in that thing, they talk about Audubon. So I thought, well, that's a plus for us because at least we've got something from Audubon. But the other thing was, when we were talking about this initially to make changes, we were talking 5,000 square feet. Are you really looking to go that small still? Because that's where it came. It was 5,000. We had too many people coming in with, shh. so it got raised to 35,000, which was basically, as Mr. Pius said, well, it's sort of a building lot. That's why it got increased. But then there was discussion, you got to go back to five. And I'm thinking, this is going to be a nightmare. Everybody well, if, in it, if it went back to five, I think there'd have to be exemptions in there for certain things. Because if you're repairing a septic system, I don't think you need a stormwater. Right. Some so, towns do make it so that it is 5,000, and you have to submit pound of flesh, you know, in order to get a permit for it. And I don't think that's where we're aiming for. Okay. Oh, well, there's I, also I will... some sites where they are doing a septic fair where they're dragging mud out in the street everywhere. So it gets a little... Tricky. It may be in the fees that we set the disturbance in the project or whatever. We haven't had these discussions yet. So. I know I was not looking to go back to five because I remember what it was like when it was at five and it was it was ridiculous. We just had way, way too many. Um, but it did come up. So, Miss Aggie. I agree. I don't think it should be reduced. However, I do think there's some projects that should be included irrespective of the disturbance area. And I think that's what we'll get into when we start our discussions. And just to answer your question, this is Caledonia directly. There was a submitted plan that was stamped by an engineer that said the disturbance was not 35,000, it was under 35,000.
I think we'll probably get some guidance too once. Um, I expect we're going to get more stuff from the EPA, and I'm hoping there's just going to be stuff in there that we look at and say, well, that part works. Well, that part doesn't work. We'll see how much of it we can get to uh, reduce the amount of work we have to do, incorporate some stuff and revise other stuff. Um, uh, I was quite surprised. I wasn't aware that um, APA had asked for over two years ago to have the uh, DEP up, update their regs for post-construction. Um, but that goes back to the issue of DEP wants primacy in Massachusetts. So far, New Hampshire and Massachusetts have said no, which quite frankly, I support. But anyhow, that's a whole nother issue that's come up three or four times at MMA. Um, and it hasn't uh, made it through the state house, so whatever. Uh, anything, uh, all right, so um, should 210 Williams be on next agenda? Uh, well, I don't know when they're planning on starting construction. I'm assuming it's any day now. Um, it doesn't have a stormwater permit, so it would probably just fall into agents' reports if, if something was, they were dragging mud out into the street or whatever, then we have to put it on our radar. Okay. Um, agenda item 6E. This one's going to be on forever. 2371 County Street. Any response from the state? No, but we actually are waiting for a response from the Board of Selectmen at this point. The Conservation Commission requested the Board of Selectmen follow up. By sending a letter. By sending a letter. Yes, by sending a letter. And I followed up with Leanne yesterday. That letter has not been written. So my chairman is following up. Slide. That letter was the CONCOM voted to do that, right? Okay. okay, it'll be on the agenda for the next meetings agent reports. Um, public input. Does anybody have any public input? Yeah, public input. Oh, look at that. She got handouts. Handy handy brochures, what they're worth. You guys want to take some? Um, and then I also wanted to bring to everyone's attention. So, like, there are stormwater ones as well in other towns. Oh. Put it on my mirror so I look at it every morning. Uh, so, Maybe we want to do a stormwater flyer uh, for sure. Well, we're supposed to revise when we got and then. This is the one C. This is an example. Uh, what we talked about doing was um, changing the colors because the colors are not, there are parts of it that are difficult to read because of the background shading. So we talked about doing that and I asked for some new pictures, Dighton pictures. Um, we had not changed uh, um, wording, but I got to take that to BP also. Um, so I'm waiting. I need things. Uh, the color combination, I'm going to say to them, we really want something that's visible. Uh, you know, we used all these, most of them up, and we'll use the rest of them, but uh, we need something that stands out. Like, like both of these really stand out. Because uh, of the color. I like the pictures. Came on pretty good. I have a couple complaints. Who did all the, the pictures? Complaints. I'll keep them. Who did all the pictures? Me and Jim mostly. Okay. Jim yeah. You had complaints about the brochures? Yeah. Really? My brochure. Really? I just had one complaint. There's a photo in the middle, but it's not a wild one. Yeah. I guess I'm the only one. It's more of a, yeah. It, it, on dump on Pine Street? I don't know. I couldn't get any. What? It's a poster. No, it's a shed. And I couldn't get any answers to where the picture was. However, it probably 
does provide recharge of groundwater. So in some way, shape, or form, it is connected to a wetland. Or all connected to the wetland. Hmm. Mr. Ferry, I would say that that picture, now that I look at it, the area you have that I photographed and that we had places is much better maintained. I'll leave it at that. And if that's what it looks like now, this problem. <laughs> hey, I see on here you got off screen nesting platform. I see they're starting to build an off screen nest right in front of Bristol Egg and one of the platforms at the top of the pole. That might not be a bad picture okay. to add to this. Oh, it's yours, it's ours. Storm. Not stormwater, but it's going to be. Can I take that building down to make open space? Oh, you get a blank spot here. You're not supposed to have blank spots. How can you put that down maybe with the baby? You put an apple and your tag on it. They all native species. Yes. Yeah. Well, if that's the vernal pool, I get the eggs that are in it. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, yeah, these are nice. So again, um, the message I think was good, but again, it's the it's the background on that, which which I will talk to the school about getting changes. But uh, if anyone's got any pictures uh, that we can use for the brochure. Um, I haven't gotten any pictures yet, so we're still on the public input, so I'll mention this. Did you get them? I got yours. Okay. I didn't send you none? Oh, I did. No. Um, so far, I've gotten pictures from the, uh, um, Mr., how do you say it, Berth? Uh, Mr. Berthaman, I've got Three or four, I've got pictures from Mrs. Caledonia. Oh, um, for the calendar, <laughs> I got a dozen spectacular sunrises from Jen Louise. Wow. She would come in at the crack of dawn and her, obviously the back of the building, she would turn around and it, there were so many, I mean, your calendar's infinitum. But I got, uh, I opened the email today. It was like, wow, what pictures? I mean, gorgeous. Um, and um, Mr. Chandonet sent me a couple. And um, one of them, I, it's, it's remarkable. I believe it's the um, Broad Cove Nature Trail from Hart Street. And the way, when you look at it, off center to this side. So you're looking down at the path, but on this side, there is a stone wall and close to you, there is a tree that's got fungi on it. It's a gorgeous picture. Cause I, I wrote to him and said, what is this? Am I looking at? Yeah, so he sent me a couple of pictures uh, that are really good. I've got some that I took off of Brook Street when we were looking at acquiring land up there. I'm Without you that shock picture. I asked you where that was. It was in the Tarn River. Yeah, I, but where in the Tarn River? Right in front of Shark Boat, yeah. Okay. Yes, you sent me the shark, and I didn't include it in the folder yet, because I said, is he playing games? No. Not, no. That, not that you do that. Let me tell you a quick story about that uh -oh. shark. Well, that shark. I'm out on the boat fishing, right? <laughs> Josh. And there's a helicopter following me around. I'm like, why is this helicopter following me? <laughs> right? I was getting a little paranoid. Now, I'm busy looking up at the helicopter. So then I go home, I'm having supper, I get Channel 10 News on. They were photographing the whale, I mean, the shark that was right near my boat. I never saw the shark. Never caught it? No, I was looking at the helicopter. And I got another whale in here, too. I'm going to send you a white minky whale that was in the town. I remember the, the winky, mink, <laughs> winky, <laughs> minky whale. I sent you a picture. You know I'm no good at email. Huh? I send them, but I don't receive well. Well, no, I didn't get the picture, but yeah, I it was a picture from Woody, so yeah. I said where well, was it taken because it looks like the boat yard and everything else. But I'm saying yeah. he didn't respond, and I'm thinking <laughs> I can see me putting this in a calendar, and somebody's saying that's not Dayton. Yeah, it is okay. Funny. Everybody, you heard it. If the picture of the shock is in the calendar, look, because you know that's a white Mickey. Yeah, I remember we'll, that. I'll send yeah. it to you. Center photo of a monarch taken in Dyke. So that's pretty cool, too. Did anybody get any local photos of that that 
rare bird that came through town a year ago? But it, it, I guess it's kind of cool, like the shock went up, but it's not really indigenous. It's not that it's indigenous, it's that it happened. I mean, there are other events that happened in Taiwan that we don't want to put pictures out of. But in any case, uh, anyhow, I still need some more pictures. Um, oh, and uh, one of the pictures from the the uh, area behind Arujo's also has snow. So I I got to have some seasonal pictures. They can't all look like spring or summer. So. Uh, Anything like that. Uh, I'm hoping that the Trails Committee and some of the work they've done, if they've been out taking pictures, that would be good. Uh, and whatever we get, I'm going to save them all. So if, if this is something that wants to, you want, want to continue, we'll have photos. But I'm just asking everybody to uh, send in whatever they have. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention under public input. Um, on March the 7th, I received a, a, it's like an email newsletter, and I sent it out to everybody I could think of, all committees, boards, and everything else. It was from Pioneer Legal, Massachusetts High Court Strikes Downtown Civility Code is Unconstitutional. You've probably heard uh, Mr. Hull talk about the changes and how public input is handled uh, because we certainly were in violation of that, or I should say the Board of Selectmen was. Um, but this was the case in, uh, I believe it was South, Southboro, that the town had an open meeting law uh, violation because there was a civility code and the court struck it down. So you've heard Mr. Uh, Hall talk about how they handle public input. So I'm just mentioning this because I sent it out to everybody. And um, obviously we'll follow this. We haven't had situations here uh, where there was violations of anything for public input, but I just mentioned it to you. Uh, just so they're aware of it. Um, the other thing I have here, and I, I've got a couple of copies. Of, I had um, given a copy to Mr. Ferry. I had, I had hoped to actually see this, but in Newport, uh, back in January, uh, Newport Spring Park set to open this summer. And what was unique is construction of Spring Park in Newport is underway. Uh, it was already completed. It was supposed to be summer of this year. But the reason I cut this out is because there's an installation uh, below ground, Silva, S-I-L-V-A, cell system. It's a high quality tree care and stormwater management tool used to improve ecological function in urban areas. Um, the cells provide support for tree roots and management of stormwater runoff. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to take that for the corn cob. Mr. Ferry said it wouldn't be appropriate for stuff that's happening in town right now, but uh, I was hoping to see this thing. Uh, but when I got in touch with the uh, uh, gentleman in charge of this, um, Parks and Superintendent of Parks, Grounds, and Forestry, Scott Wheeler, told me, unfortunately, it had already been uh, buried underground. But uh, I don't know if anywhere along the way or with the that river, uh, the, the bike trail or anything else they may be putting in. I don't know if there's any place in town that this might be appropriate. But uh, it, it's kind of interesting to, to see how it all uh was put together. It looks like a lot of plastic stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody else have anything on the public input? I just wanted you to know, I, I still issued quite a few uh, correspondence with my building permit for stormwater. We still have that packet, which is the trap rock, why stormwater is important, et cetera, et cetera. So that's still going out there. Okay, you're giving that out? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the pre-construction meeting, uh, was there anything, I should have asked this before, when we did that pre-construction meeting at um, the Cabral Farm on Tremont Street and it went into the Racine Farm on Middle Street, 
Was there anything that came out of that other than you walked around and checked everything out and they're good to go? I think the only thing we said was add some uh, saltation control in one area. That was it, right? On well, the back of that house. Then. Yeah, that was it. No, it was pretty, pretty forthright. The only questions I've had, and it, it didn't come up at that meeting, was how are they going to put, how are they going to install solar panels that are high enough to farm under so we don't see them? Because it's an agricultural helicopter. So everybody looks up. <laughs> I don't have the plans with me, but I thought it was yeah. like six feet off the ground or eight feet off the ground. Now that they're, they're um they're gonna use animals over there. Yeah, yeah. The animals are doing up to the panel. Yeah. Oh, it's not gonna be no, they're not gonna grow butternut. Okay. They're bringing in animals. Okay, all right. And the goats won't chew on the wires. Cow they're all in conduit. They're all in conduit. Right. To answer your question directly, I was only joking. They use all terrain lifts <laughs> and they drive the lifts up and down the roads and put the panels on that way. So I think you're it's permanently hard. installed. Oh. Are people going to say, but you can't see them according to our rules? Well, they're going to build the 11. What? No, it's top. 14 oh. foot high fence on a oh. three foot high berm. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. I don't be able to see much. The only concern I have about our fence is whether it's going to stay up. Well, so, yeah. Uh, so, but I'm really screwed. I might set them up for review, actually. When we <laughs> recently approved something for them, I asked them if there was going to be enough money in the decommissioning bond or, or a separate bond to pay for the repairs to the fence if the fence went down. And the guy said, well, the, the fence... Uh, I forget how he worded it. In other words, he thought the fence was a security fence. And I said, no, it's not a security fence. Oh, it was that's right, too, because I was sitting right there. And I said, the security fence is a six-foot high chain link fence that goes around it. And I said, I'm pretty sure I could hop over that. And Joe Figueroa says, well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> but the other, the, the big fence is a screening fence. So if it does come down, it could be quite costly to repair. Is the screening fence inside the the chain link, or it is both screening and security? Oh, so I, I just had a submittal. Um, I don't have the full plan submittal. Once that comes in, I'm probably going to send that portion out for third party review because I'm concerned that if the fence is subject to wind, high winds, is it vinyl. You know well, if, in order for it to be screening, it has to be solid. Solid. So I want to make sure that this isn't going to end up in the roadway. So exactly what we said too at our meeting, right? Because like I said, how do you plan on blocking this view? So they came back with a plan. They said they're going to build a three foot high berm with a, I think 11 foot high stockade fence. So after the meeting, shake your head. Yes. <laughs> right. So after the meeting, I said, they're never going to do that because once they get the engineering cost back, it's going to be too expensive. And then they, they sent it out for engineering and they came back and they said they'd do it. So. But isn't the fence the responsibility for the lifetime of the project, whoever owns it? If it blows down, somebody's got to put it up. Technically, yes. But, um, well, the third party review that I intend to do is going to protect the town to make sure that someone looked at it to make sure this thing is going to stay up. But if it does come down, what Mr. Woods is referring to is the response time has to be immediate. So we think we should have something in play that we can deal with it as a town <laughs> while we're waiting for X and Y to come in. So, right. Um, we must be unique in about the way we go about screening. And I realize it's part of our planning uh, board uh, regs. Has anybody been down the southern end of 95 going into Connecticut around uh, Exeter, West Greenwich? They cleared a huge, huge, I thought it was gonna be a shopping center, uh, area on the, on the uh, right southbound. It goes on and on and on. The trees on 95 do not block it. And the, it's rolling land. I mean, so you got this, and I've been watching it because I'm thinking, where's the fence? Uh, it's, they're not going to block it, evidently. Uh, and it goes on for so long, I don't know if it's West Greenwich and Exeter. But what I've noticed also, um, if you get on the highway from uh, Route 102, 
to take 95 northbound. You don't go very far north, there's one on that side. And I mean, it's, it, I've never seen such a large, I need a helicopter. I've never seen such a large installation. Even the ones you see from the highway, the ones on Crabberry Boards, it just goes on and on. And I'm surprised the way that the land is rolling because they're up the hill and down the hill. Um, but I don't know how long it's it's been there, but I did notice it. Uh, I didn't see any signs about who who is uh, who the proponent is or who's the construction company. Um, okay. Um, Correspondence, A day. Um, this was, you can see, what this was added after we had uh, put the agenda together. Um, Attorney Mitchell called and uh, sent an email and said that the attorney for Mr. Lopes and Mr. Crowley advised him that uh, the work has been done. And the stormwater committee said, after the work was done, we're gonna go out and do another look. So we need to set a date to go out to Wellington Acres to just look at what's been done. Uh, I thought, I mean, I know we had to do that, but I think it was the meeting before this one, we said, we're, we're finished with Wellington Acres. We're finished with what we asked them to do. Now they're saying, we did it folks, now come look at it. So, uh, so we need to do that. So what's a good day? Anybody get any idea? Next week's tough for me, but we got it pretty good. All right, so let's look at Okay. Uh, I got Monday, May 1st open, um, afternoon of the second, all day on Wednesday, morning of the fourth. That's the first week. Are any of those days good for anybody? One, all day. Two, afternoon. Three, all day. Four, morning. Wednesday. All right. Wednesday is good or not? The third? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday May the third. Works for me. Um, I'm on summer schedule, so. Okay, I'm just looking at this. Uh, is the afternoon okay? Say, um, I uh, if we have a department head meeting, it'll be in the morning. Before that, I got um, Board of Assessors, and I may have fence viewers too, but we try to do those quickly before the department head meeting. So I would say, does 1.30 on May 3rd look good? What time is that? 1.30 on May 3rd. That's a Wednesday? Yeah. I keep Wednesdays open just for this town. Is that this rest town? of the week I'm fishing? This town or this committee? Everything. Oh. Whatever you need me, I'm there on a Wednesday. He's equal opportunity. Wednesday is night and day. He's an, oh, okay. He's an equal opportunity meeting schedule. Yeah. Okay. So 1.30, May 3rd. Um, we'll do the site visit. Uh, I got to get in touch with um, Attorney Mitchell. If that doesn't work, is the morning of the fourth any good for anybody? Just in case I have to come up with another one. Yep. Um, no, Robert, you'll be fishing. Yeah, and the fifth is my anniversary, so. Call out the sharks. Cinco de Mayo. Call out the sharks. <laughs> uh, the fourth would be, yes, in the morning. Uh, is nine o'clock on the fourth an alternate? I mean, Mr. Ferry. Nine o'clock. Yeah. So you're going to go for the third first, and then if not, it'll be the fourth. Yeah. So the alternate is May May fourth at nine a.m. Meetings the seventeenth. Yes. Okay, so um, I'll get in touch with Attorney Mitchell. See what we can set up. And you'll post the meeting? Yeah, site visit. All right, site visit.
Oh, wait, this didn't come up under, under any reports or anything else. Um, Mrs. East today. Hmm. Well, Mr. Woods. Yes. Forest Hills status. Denied. Well, I know that. <laughs> Have they, they had 20 days to appeal. Did they do it? Yeah. Yes, they filed an appeal. And so it's in the court now. <clears throat> it's in the court's hands now. So we just wait for the court to act? Oh, yeah. They, they're sending me Pretty much. the letters and everything else. Yep. Yeah. So. Has, have you had any experience with this? Does anybody, does it take long or? It does. Um, what's going to happen now is there'll be a whole bunch of information gathering, depositions, that kind of stuff. They'll schedule some kind of pre-hearing with the courts. Um, there'll be settlement of offers. It could be a year to two before they actually get some front of the Because we're being sued by two other people too. So they got to get in line. Right. It depends which judge. Perhaps I'll put it that way, Woody, but. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <Get in line. laughs> There's not another developer suing us, too. Not Strawberry Fields. That's the, that's I, us. I, I don't think I can thing. say, so I don't okay. want to say. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> we're appealing. The right. That's with but I get legal notices mailed to me, certified mail, and uh, all kinds of stuff. The only thing that would probably Sarah be brought brought the is if they try and get some kind of summary judgment from a judge based on the previous court hearing, and that might move them up in the timeline a little bit, but I don't have familiarity with that. But the two issues you raised, the water is primary. I mean. Yeah, you can't get building permits without water, so pretty simple. I pray for a lot of rain hmm. and a big container. Okay, uh, I was just wondering because um, it was continued to May in time and I notified them and told them of the planning board decision and said, not gonna happen for a while in Dayton. So, uh, okay, just, uh, okay. Next item agenda, approval of the minutes for February 15th only. I don't have March 15th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes February 15th? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Vote unanimous. Does it, as does anybody other than the stuff we've already said we're going to continue? Is there anything new on the horizon that we would put on the agenda? Like I say, this this one was the last minute thing for Mister uh, from Attorney uh, Mitchell, but um, right now it's pretty much routine stuff that we're doing. Uh, One other item that maybe should have been on there. Zero Horton Street violation. Carlos. Oh, the one up by the church. Oh, yeah. Well, we're still waiting to see how much disturbance. Well, we're still, stuff yeah, we're waiting for the plan. From what I can see, it's greater than 35,000 square feet. The majority of the alterations are flatlands or, and or buffer zones. So at this point, we're kind of still waiting. I think we're still waiting to find out what their plan is before we would right. do something else. But so, all right, just so I'll remember, I'll put it on, but we'll decide whether or not it stays on. Uh, what is this? This will be an agenda item for May, May. So, yeah, that would be good. Horton Street. Zero Horton, map 10, lot 53. Zero Horton, map 10, lot 53? Yep. Do you find yeah. owners if their addresses are appearing yep. on our agenda? Well, I is this to tell them tomorrow night, if, but you guys want to tell them more formally? Is this before the CONCOM right now? Not before us, but under discussion so that they've received a saying you're in violation. I've conducted site visits with the engineer and the wetland scientists. They've come to several of our meetings and they're coming tomorrow night because they haven't submitted a plan, even though they promised us a plan. So, okay, we got to give them notification if it's going to be on a stormwater thing before, obviously. But right now, this is just a placeholder. 
And we're waiting for them to submit something, and then we would most likely add it to our agenda. Okay. All right. And and if whatever we're waiting for doesn't arrive in time, we'll just move it to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, because as part of um, filing with conservation, they're required to file to the Board of Health Building Department. <laughs> so when that comes in, you'll see it. Okay, I'm just listening as a placeholder, whether or not it's actually going to be there. Uh, but we get closer to the date. Uh, is there anything else um, that anyone wants to bring up, even like for the next meeting? Um, so the next meeting is Wednesday, May the 17th. Um, we have a pizza. No pizza. Who wants to be? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you know, but the uh, pizza place was sold. Really? And the pizza has gone from good to quality. It's mediocre. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. I wouldn't even call it mediocre. No. What a shame. That's too bad. But that's why he was able to sell it, because it was good. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they're the same workers in there, so maybe they just went cheap on the products. And... Uh, if, here we have another place. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. It looks like it's 215. Hey, that's a record. Uh, let me stop recording.